we have here the case of Home Credit Mutual Building and Loan Association versus Prudente, which deals with the principles of non-diminution of benefits. In 1997, Home Credit gave its employee her first service vehicle. Later, the employee purchased the vehicle from Home Credit at its depreciated value. In 2003, Home Credit granted the employee's request for a second service vehicle. However, Home Credit required the employee to pay for an additional equity in excess of the maximum limit of 660,000 pesos. The employee again purchased the vehicle at its depreciated value. In 2009, the employee applied for a third service vehicle. This time, Home Credit informed the employee that she must pay the equity more than 550,000 pesos. Home Credit likewise adopted a cost-sharing scheme where the employer must shoulder 40% of the acquisition price. Aggrieved, the employee filed a complaint against Home Credit for violation of Article 100 of the Labor Code on non-diminution of benefits. Was the employer's benefit diminished? The Supreme Court ruled that no diminution of benefits occurred. According to the court, employees generally have a vested right over existing benefits that the employer voluntarily granted them. These benefits cannot be reduced, diminished, discontinued, or eliminated consistent with the constitutional mandate to protect the rights of workers and promote their welfare. Jurisprudence dictates that the principle of non-diminution of benefits is founded on the constitutional mandate to protect the rights of workers and promote their welfare and to afford labor full protection. The court clarified that the basis for the non-diminution rule is not Article 100, which refers solely to benefits enjoyed at the time of the promulgation of the Labor Code. The court stated that an employer-employee relationship is contractual and is based on the express terms of the employment contract as well as on its implied terms, among them those not expressly agreed upon but which the employer has freely, voluntarily, and consistently extended to its employees. Under the principle of mutuality of contracts embodied under Article 1308 of the Civil Code, the terms of a contract, both express and implied, cannot be withdrawn except by mutual consent or agreement of the contracting parties. The court added that the non-diminution rule applies only if the benefit is based on an express policy, a written contract, or has ripened into a practice. In the present case, the court found that the employee's claim that the car plan was part of her hiring package was unsubstantiated. The record shows that Home Credit had no existing car plan at the time of the employee's hiring. Her employment contract did not even contain an express provision on her entitlement to a service vehicle at full company cost. The court also found that the car plan had not ripened into a company practice. According to the court, a practice or custom is not a source of a legally demandable or enforceable right. In labor cases, however, the benefits which were voluntarily given by the employer and which have ripened into a company practice are considered as rights and are subject to the non-diminution rule. To be considered a company practice, the benefit must be consistently and deliberately granted by the employer over a long period of time. It requires an indubitable showing that the employer agreed to continue giving the benefit knowing fully well that the employee is not covered by any provision of law or agreement for its payment. The burden to establish that the benefit has ripened into a company practice rests with the employee. In the present case, the court found that Home Credit's act of giving service vehicles to the employee had been a company practice but not as to the non-participation aspect. There was no substantial evidence to prove that the car plan at full company cost had ripened into company practice. The court reiterated that the only time the employee was given a service vehicle fully paid for by the company was for her first car. For the second vehicle, the company already imposed a maximum limit of 660,000 pesos, but the employee never questioned this. She willingly paid for the equity in excess of the said limit. Thus, the elements of consistency and deliberateness were not present.